But the news here that I really, really want to bring up is Raiders, Devontae Adams. He's requested a trade. Devontae Adams, now, this dude has played with the Raiders for the past few seasons, and um, you've seen him on the Netflix series of Receiver, and it was solid on there. Um, and he talked a little bit about his experience. The Raiders, they haven't really been good in the past few years. They've struggled. They haven't had much success. Um, this is a team that's been below 500 uh, over the past few years. And they have great talent. They have some nice talent where they should have been somewhat successful. Obviously, we know injuries always play a part in this, of course. But above all, it seems like Devontae Adams is just, you know, sick of the non-quarterback, doesn't have a good quarterback, iffy quarterback type of stuff. Last year, they finished with a record of 8-9, nothing special. The year before that, the Raiders did not do anything. We're 6-11. and 11. They got spanked right now. The Raiders, they're still kind of struggling. They're at 2-2, two and two, but it's been some shaky victories. Above all, let's talk teams where we can see Devontae Adams because some of the rumors that's been out right now, they're saying, okay, well, he wants to go play with a quarterback that he's already has some sort of rapport with. So that being Aaron Rodgers in the New York Jets or possibly the New Orleans Saints being the front runner. I seen there was something, uh, a reporter, he cooked up a three-team trade where it was saying uh, Devontae Adams may go to the Jets and the Jets send Riddick to the Falcons. And uh, from there, the Raiders will receive draft picks from the Falcons in the previous year. So I personally love that being a Falcons fan, but I, I get how other parties may not like that. The Raiders just only getting some draft picks for an exceptional talent like Devontae Adams. The Jets would obviously love that bringing in Devontae Adams, but I think it could work over there. But also the thing where I'm concerned about Devontae Adams going with the Jets is, you know, look, they're already dysfunctional. The Jets have already been a dysfunctional team this season, and we're only in week four. Robert Saleh and Aaron Rodgers clearly do not get along. They're bickering back and forth with each other every press conference chance they get. Obviously, we got some guys who are, are trying to figure out new contracts. They still haven't played a single down, and this has been going on all the way since training camp. So Jets just look dysfunctional to me. One game, they look brilliant. The next game, the offense cannot get a single rhythm. They can't score a touchdown. Only a field goal. So Jets, I, I would rule them out. I, I understand why Adams would want to go play with them, playing with Aaron Rodgers all those years in Green Bay, having some sort of success in Green Bay. You know you have a guy you can trust. You know you have a guy who takes it just as serious as you. Obviously, all of that stuff is going to matter, but when the elements around y'all isn't lining up, and you can't control that, what are you going to do? You're going to be back in the same situation as you were with the Raiders. Unhappy, upset at the front office, upset at the head coach. And it's crazy that all of this stuff started with the head coach. And, and you know, with Pierce, we thought we thought it was funny games. We thought he was just trolling. He ended up liking a post about Adams being traded and stuff. So most people on media thought this was just a simple troll. We're like, oh, Antonio Pierce isn't serious. He's not trying to trade him. It was a rough game in the interview. He called out, we don't know exactly who it was, but he said, hey, some guys made some business decisions, so we're going to make some business decisions. I guess this is maybe what he was talking about. I'll play the audio at the end. We'll find it and we'll pull it up. But like, that's that's crazy to me. It's like we thought all of this was a joke at one point, And now come to find out, no, it was Devontae Adams is who he may have been talking about, allegedly. And then also, like, Adams was serious about actually wanting to trade. So this was this was wild here. And, and you know, I would, I would mark the Jets off. I would mark the Jets off. It's just too similar to the situation you're leaving. You want a better situation than that. I, I'm, not, I'm not rocking with that. Um, as far as the New Orleans Saints, which is another big option there for Devontae Adams, could be dope. I think this would be a great pickup for the Saints. Man, they already got so much depth on that team. Like, oh my gosh, it, it would be nasty. It would be nasty to bring in a, a Devontae Adams at receiver when you already got Kamara in the backfield. You already got Jamison Williams. Uh, oh, not Jamison Williams. You already got uh, Jalen James Williams, the running back, other running back who's injured right now. Crucial guy for that offense with the Saints. And I mean, this, this could this could get nasty. I think the Saints are a good organization that will really be able to bring 
Devontae Adams some peace. He played with Derek Carr in college, so they have some rapport together as well. And, you know, above all, this is a relationship in a situation that's a lot better than the New York Jets right now. Because the Jets, it's, it's dysfunctional. It's not good. It's not rolling. But with the Saints, I mean, obviously, they've been playing some of their best ball in the first three games of the NFL season so far. They, they've looked good in just about every game. The offense, maybe one game, and that was against the Eagles where they didn't look the best. But above that, we see the consistency within the New Orleans Saints so far. If they add Devontae Adams, you give another serious threat um, with the with the uh, offensive end right there. You still got Chris Olave. You got Rashid Shahid. He's still there. And then ultimately, when your running back, Jamal Williams, does come back, now you have a huge advantage because you have even another weapon. And when Taysom Hill comes back, you have another weapon. So to me, the New Orleans Saints just have more of a put together team rather than, you know, trying to figure this out and let's make it work. Let's see if it works. It's less of an experiment. If you go to the New Orleans Saints, I would hate for this to happen. Being a Falcons fan, I would not want this to be the case at all. It, I, I would be so sick because I just know Saints is another team that the Falcons might see later on, especially if they want to win the division and especially if, above all, they want to continue to advance in the playoffs. You're going to have to run through the Saints. You're going to have to run through the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But as far as me being unbiased and genuinely speaking on which situation may be best for Devontae Adams, I 1,000% agree that it's the New Orleans Saints. Now, of course, y'all, we can figure out some other teams of like, oh, well, maybe he should go here. Maybe he should go there. Of course, we can figure that out. But let's be real. I haven't seen any other reports about him going to other teams. Chiefs was deemed a no. They said, no, he's not going to the Chiefs because like, they don't have the salary cap. They're not trying to make the moves right now. They said no to the Eagles. The Eagles not making that move at all. I, I seen multiple teams where just like, you know, wild shots or long shots of, oh, Adam should go here. Adam should go here. But they don't have the salary cap. The only true genuine teams I've seen so far is the teams of the New Orleans Saints and also uh, the the New York Jets. They said he wants to go play with, you know, a team that he has some sort of rapport with. But anyway, look, man, look, here's the audio of Antonio Pierce. He was talking about the Raiders and that business decision that they have to make and that guys were making after week three. This was in week three. So here we are. We got the audio. It's right here. I know you're upset with the performance. How would you rate your concern um, about the team's effort? It seemed like this is one of the first games under your leadership that you, the team just didn't seem to show up tonight. No, they didn't. I think as the game went on, uh, I don't think it was a team. It was, I think there was definitely some individuals that made business decisions and will make business decisions going forward as well. Now, that was the game against the Panthers, and they lost that game 36-32. to So, there's a lot of frustration there, but hey, I guess that's what he was talking about, Devontae Adams. Anyway, look, man, I'm going to leave y'all with this here. I'm going to leave y'all on a positive note, of course. Always want to leave some sort of something to positively take with you, if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, look, it's Friday. I don't know what day you're going to listen to this and what day you're going to hear this, but I'm going to just tell you this, bro. Whatever you do, make sure you remember... As long as it don't kill you, it's going to make you stronger. I'm going to keep it that simple. Sometimes I try and get deep on here, but no, nah, I'm going to just keep it simple, bro. As long as it don't kill you, it's going to make you stronger. And I mean, at the end of the day, bro, you live to fight another day if it didn't destroy you. So, I mean, it might have you down bad, whatever it is. You might be rough. You might be struggling. You might be uncomfortable for a second. But just know if you still taking step after step, you still moving forward. Hey, that means you winning, man. That means you winning and you just only a few more steps closer to where you trying to be. So take that with you. Accept that however you want to accept that. Other than that, man, look, hey, we're going to be back later on this week. Actually, no, next week. We will be back next week. Um, but, hey, leave a quick take on our voicemail call, 219-413-9405. Use the promo code for SeatGeek to get $20 off your first ticket purchase. Use the promo code The Run Podcast. And uh, other than that, hey, we'll be back later on next week after Monday Night Football or probably before Monday Night Football. We'll figure it out. You'll see. Just stay tuned. Just follow us on Instagram. Follow us on social media. Follow us on Spotify, iPodcast, wherever you listen to this. I appreciate it. Send us to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, a co-worker, a friend, a spouse, your side piece, your partner, your main piece, your mama, your dad, anybody. Send us to them. I promise you they will not mind. 
Um, but other than that, hey, look, all right, I'm up out of here, y'all. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate you for tuning in. We'll be back so on, so on next week, and so on, and so on, and a week after that, and so on, and so on, and so on.